Hi everyone! No, you're not seeing things. It is me here on a Monday. Kayla asked me if I would switch days with her because this Friday is her birthday and she wanted to do a video on her birthday. So of course I said yes, so you get to start your week with me today instead of ending it. So this week I'm going to kick it off. We're talking about classical type EDS. I do not have classical types, so I can't talk from any personal experience on this, but I did do my research. I have my notes, so I'm just going to give the basics, or at least the basics from what I found when I was looking online. Just some straight to the point facts, some criteria, some signs, symptoms, just real basic, and I'm hopefully as the week goes on we'll get more and more information to give you a better idea of what classical type is like. So I hope this won't be too long. I have a track record for having really long videos, so let's just dive right into it. Classical type is formerly known as types 1 and 2. We do not go by the number system anymore. I learned this at the conference last summer. So types 1 and 2 are now grouped together and known as classical type. Classical type is also autosomal dominant, dominant which we've learned about in the past. And classical type affects approximately 1 in 20,000 to 50,000 people. Going back to the number system, which was the previous way of doing it, type 1 had more severe skin involvement and was known as the gravest or gravis type, and type 2 had mild to moderate skin involvement, or it is the midis or midis type. And if I'm saying this wrong, please let me know. Types 1 and 2 only differ in phenotypic severity. In, a, in genetics terms, a phenotype is an observable characteristic or trait, so it only differs in physical severity, things that you can see. So, on to some signs and symptoms here. One, and probably the most major criteria, being skin hyperextensibility, which is something that's not typically found with hypermobility type. And skin hyperextensibility should be tested at a neutral location, such as the forearm. And it is measured by pulling the skin until resistance is felt. And the second major criteria is widened atrophic scarring. So, as I just mentioned, both skin hyperextensibility and widened atrophic scarring are some of the major criteria in diagnosing classical type. And now I've got a whole list of some of the minor criteria that I'm going to read off for you right now. First being smooth and velvety skin. The next one being molluscoid tumors. I think I'm pronouncing that right, I'm not quite sure. Which are fleshy lesions with scars that are found on pressure points such as the elbows and the knees. Next up we have sub subcutaneous spheroids. Lots of long interesting <laughs> words here we have today which are small, hard nodules. Next is joint hypermobility. So it's not a major criteria, and there can be some overlapping of symptoms between the types of EDS, but one necessarily one doesn't denote the other. So mainly, as we're seeing here with classical type, it's mainly skin involvement. The next being muscle hypotonia, which as seems to go around for all the types. It's with hypermobility type, and now we're seeing it as a symptom for classical type as well. The next one is easy bruising, which is something that I do experience, not terribly. Some people probably get it much worse, but a lot of the time I notice I'll wake up with bruises and I try to think back, did I knock into something? Did I bump into a coffee table or a wall? Yes, I have, but it I don't remember. It just happens probably just from gently hitting something, not even realizing it. Like I said, for me, it's not terrible, but for some, from what I've seen online, it can be really bad. And I do sometimes bruise from IVs as well. So it means I don't have classical type, I have hypermobility type, but it's probably something that just goes around. I mean, collagen around the skin, bad collagen, fragile skin, just comes with the territory. Next, we have, sorry, this is just, I cannot read my handwriting today. Manifestations of tissue extensibility and fragility, such as having a hiatal hernia or maybe like an organ prolapse or something. And lastly, I have surgical complications which probably are from incision sites where the, where stitches might rip or they might not be able to hold because the skin is so loose and fragile and just kind of not holding itself together very well. So that about wraps it up. Like I said, I don't have classical types so I can't really talk much about it, though I did do some research and the one website that I got these facts from seemed to be the best. So I hope I was correct in everything that I'm saying. If there's something I missed, hopefully it'll be covered later this week, or if I was completely totally wrong, please let me know. Please send me your questions. I didn't do a video last week because I didn't get any questions and I don't like not making videos. This is something that I'm really, really liking. It's kind of reignited my 
love, I guess you could say, for filming and editing. It's something I haven't done since high school and I love that I'm doing it now. So please give me a reason to film rather than just sitting here and talking to the camera. We want to hear from you. There's over 50 of you now, so please give us your input. Now I can say I hope you have a great week instead of I hope you have a great weekend. Wish Kayla a happy birthday on Friday and I'll say it now as an early happy birthday, Kayla, even though it's not until Friday. But I hope you have a great week. I'm sure we've got lots of great videos ahead. And I'll see you next week. Bye.